Hey everybody, it's Texas Turkey here in Lance's Performance Shop along with StarMopars.com. It is Saturday night, way later start than I thought I'd get out here. Change course of action and apparently this battery is not charged either. But what we've got here is a right angle die grinder. And as you can see, it's currently equipped with a sanding disc. <laughs> and, uh, not quite sure what I was doing last with it, but we were doing something. And this is just kind of a nice little accessory. Typically, uh, I thought that I had another 90 degree with a wheel on it, and I can't find it. But uh, it's, I'm sure it's here somewhere. But, uh, typically, like these are dirt cheap, especially if you go through Harbor Freight. You can just pick them up, and you can that way you save a little bit of time, especially if you're like doing frame rail type stuff. Um, for example, if you've got like heavy sanding, fine sanding, sometimes I like to use little fiber wheels or wire wheels. Uh, sky is really the limit, but what's not the limit is one certain feature that we're about to cover. Now, in the case of this one, you can come in and run all sorts of accessories. You just put your wrench here, just call it with thread out. And in this case, it's like a two-inch backing pad. Uh, you can run three. You can do all kinds of crazy stuff here. Um, about the only thing I use more than this air-wise when we're talking about, you know, specialty stuff is a straight one. <laughs> And uh, straight ones, we can uh, port cast iron, aluminum, we can run wire wheels, we can run cutoff wheels, we can make it a whiz cutter, whatever we want to do. But between straight and 90 degree die grinders, they're just a, a really cool little tool to have handy. Now I'm going to start with sort of the boring stuff and we'll get going with this one. Uh, these, I know, if you, if you don't do this stuff often, you think these look stupid and they do. Uh, but what these do is actually pretty impressive. This is from Warrior. Uh, this is 3 inch. They're twist lock, 120 grit. I think these are on like $6.99 if you don't get them on sale. It's just one of those things that's really nice to have an assortment of these. They're usually color coded when it comes to these like fiber discs. Uh, you know, I think like brownish is kind of you know coarser and then as you get like green it's finer type of a thing. Might vary between manufacturers but they look dumb, but if you've never used them, you owe it to yourself to try them because the lifespan that you can get versus some other things, like say a sanding disc, is quite significant. So it just sort of kind of depends, I guess, what you're doing, what you're cutting down, what you're working on. Uh, but everything I've done, I've always found that these last just a heck of a lot longer. Uh, actually, we're idiots. We're right here on the backside. <laughs> we've got the grit guide. Uh, so right here, sort of like a brown, silverish, 40 to 60, red, 80 to 100, green, 120 to 180. Uh, and we're back Sunday afternoon. Why? The battery died. And uh, this place smells of ballastal. Why, you ask? Battery had corroded in the grill ignite button, so I had that thing soaking overnight. And uh, <laughs> it's a little bit more uh, pungent than I thought it would be. Anyway, I think before we were so rudely interrupted, I was going over the grit guide here. Uh, my only complaint, it seems like you would do that, you know, like to me, this brown tan color would be up here with like similar colors, but whatever. Uh, $6.99, we picked these up for $5.49. Apologies for the dramatic <laughs> delay there. $5.49 a pack, we snagged this. This is from Hercules, a relatively new item. It's their three piece twist lock sanding disc. So these, again, three inch diameter. Uh, we got 60 grit, we got 80, we got 120. Would have liked something finer just for future use. Didn't see anything at the time, so I just stuck with these. So, pretty good chunk of change there. We'll have to see how these hold up. But the real payoff here, and why this is here with the two inches, is because we cashed in on this. <laughs> right here. Uh, this is from Baxter. I have owned nothing. I've tried nothing from the Baxter line. As best I would understand, I guess it would like nest underneath Chief. I believe Chief is sort of positioned as their king of the hill line. And if you're thinking like, oh, well, I should have bought Chief. You know, you're going to be drunk. This is as low as you can go. And if you oil an air tool, they are pretty bulletproof most of the time. Kind of depends what it is. Some may disappoint more than others. Some may not quite have the power of something else. But in terms of just durability and doing what they're supposed to do, if you shoot oil in it, you, you're pretty golden. So this, though, is quite the upgrade in terms of just comfort and aesthetics. Now, the question is going to be performance related. And what this essentially is, it is a right angle, three inch disc sander. So, lightweight, compact design for working in tight, small spaces. Works with locking type abrasive discs. Well, hopefully, 
<laughs> have that taken care of with these items. Uh, and it's half horse, 15,000 RPM. So can you spend a little bit more and maybe get like three quarter horse or something else? Maybe. Uh, but for me, this had a big selling point that was not related to anything about how fast it spins. Uh, right here, I think everything is a bit redundant until we get to the specs. So there's an image for you. Again, the disc size is going to be 3 inch, 15,000 RPM, half horse sound level. Now, this is the one thing where if you've got like tiered hairlines, <laughs> or if you know, like I can buy these, you know, right angle die grindish for 20 bucks all day, why would I buy something for 60? It's the DB level. I cannot tell you how insanely annoying it becomes, especially ratchets. Ratchets almost worse than an impact in terms of the air related sound. Um, it's something that you might value or might want to look into if you're trying to debate, well, you know, do I buy this for 19 or this for 24? There's a significant drop in one metric, which would be the sound level. It might be worth the five dollars, right? You know, if you jump up considerably three times, you got to make that decision. Uh, it's always nice to sort of like compare. Uh, maybe a buddy has a different brand or might have an air cat and you think, ah, it's not worth it. And then you use it and you're like, hey, you know, this is nice. I can hear you type of a thing. It's just something you sort of have to experience it. Again, my advice, go with your most frequently used tool or the one that's on the blink, you know, might going to go out or that you constantly use. Or if you're lazy and trying to be efficient, which can go hand in hand, and you want to have, you know, X grit sandpaper on this one, and then you've got like your air cat that's going to be like the heavy, heavy duty where you're using it more. Go ahead, splurge, get that, and then see, hey, you know, I'm glad I spent 40 more dollars and got the X, you know, uh, DB reduction with this one. Or it might just be a comfort thing. I mean, you know, you do you. You'll figure it out. But uh, if I can get that dialed in for us. Uh, max airflow is going to be 28. We're running that through quarter NPT, and it weighs 1.6 pounds. Other things right here. Again, we'll get that to focus. Works with locking type abrasive discs. A rubber grip is going to protect against vibration and temperature. Uh, it's got a rotatable rear exhaust. I don't know why techs always come when I start stuff like this. And then there's a safety lock, as you should expect with any air tool. So, what's the big deal? Uh, all you've been able to do so far, they might think, hey, this looks way cooler than that one. Well, yeah, you know, that's subjective. You might agree, you might disagree, you might like the old school look. Um, you might think, well, that's two inch and this is three inch. That's going to be the big difference. And yeah, that is a huge difference. But there's one more. So simple packaging. There's a huge instruction manual we'll get to in a little bit. Here she is in hand. Again, what is a safety lock? It is this. We're just going to press down now. It is kind of weird to me having that on the top side versus the bottom. Why? Because virtually everything I've ever used in this configuration, right angle, we have it on the bottom. So it's more index finger related, not my thumb. Uh, you know, granted, you know, whenever I'm using one of these, it's basically going to be like this. And if I need to stop, I come off the project and go back down type of a deal. So... It might have metrics like that. Is this more comfortable than me squeezing it with the four fingers? I don't know. We're going to have to have some seat time with that. But essentially, if you think, hey, that's idiotic. It looks like it's got quarter 20 threads coming out of it or something. There's no, oh, hey, that's what you've got in your hand there. So I think there's wrenches in there. But basically, this is what I'm curious about. I know this is a 3-inch pad. Obviously, it's not an integrated component to this Baxter die grinder, or sander, I should say. I'm wondering if I can find, whether it's Baxter, Harbor Freight, insert brand X, Y, or Z, if I could get this in a 2-inch, and you're thinking, like, hey, idiot, you know, 3 inches way more surface area. The discs are going to last longer. They probably cost roughly the same. Anyway, what's the big deal? Just run this. Well, the reason that I love this little deal, and you can put all sorts of different attachments on a die grinder, is just the space. That two inches, you can get in some tight confines, right? This three inches is obviously going to mitigate that. You've got an extra half inch on both sides to worry about. But if we could get like a two, even a one inch, this is rare you would do that. You know, it'd have to be really fine, and then you'd probably want an extension. But just kind of having the option would be really good. I think that's something... Uh, 
Harbor Freight should consider adding in if they don't already. Again, I couldn't find one. They very well could have something that'll work, but uh, just package it two and three inch, kind of like when you buy a you know angle grinder. It's like, well, I run four inch wheels, but you know, hey, if you want to four and a half, I should say, if you want to run five, we included a guard. I think this is kind of one of those deals where two inch, even though three is preferable if you've got space, two inch would be a nice selling point for tight confines, right? But if you haven't figured it out still, after all that rambling and me kind of holding it here precariously for you, this is the payoff. And it's not going to be this instantly. Again, check this out. You can easily see the difference between two and three inch disc space there. But check this out. We come down right here, okay? I've got to have this much space. See how easy that one is to articulate, though? Like this one, I've sort of got to fumble with it because it's up top. But look at that. That is the sole reason that I bought this thing. It's not that it was three inches. It's that I can do this. I'm basically, with my sanding wheel, before this one would have any attachment. And this is the die grinder here, right? We put a wrench on it. We break this free. That's a little collet, you know, and we drop out whatever accessory. Look at that difference. That is a big, big deal. So I don't have calipers here handy. Actually, I probably do somewhere nearby. But just roughing this thing in by eye, we can call that like, this is very not scientific, but we'll go just a tick past two and a quarter. To make it simple, we'll call it 2250. Okay, that's from your disc all the way to the head. Now this... If we come in just from the body there, two and a quarter is right where my thumbnail is. So going all the way to the head, we're just under four inches. So you do the math there, and it's a significant space savings, and that is why I picked this up. What did we pay? This is the other thing. Uh, this is usually $59.99. We were able to get this on sale for $49.99. Now, I can tell you this actually feels pretty good. It's just going to be one of those things. I don't know if I'll get used to this or prefer that, you know, kind of be an underside. Um, I would hope we could. I don't know if we can rotate the whole thing or not, actually. <laughs> so, as you can see, Arbor Freight even tells you, oil daily where the warranty is void. So I'm just going to go ahead and pop this thing out of here. But uh, there's our inlet. Obviously, we can set that up. It's not bad like this. It's just, again, like I said, everything I've ever owned has the trigger on the bottom pretty much. So it'll take some getting used to, but uh, I would recommend wearing gloves again, especially the longer you do this. This one feels, just ignoring the trigger, <laughs> this is quite the change for me. I usually have these like cheap, cheap air tools and uh, this one's nice. So it's sort of more akin to my Ingersoll Rand stuff at work, you know? Uh, this one, nothing wrong with it at all. I mean, like I said, these are a fantastic value uh, and they're just stupid reliable. Typically, uh, true story. If you're wondering like, what well, could ever fail? Why would you have to buy multiples of these if they're so great? Switches break. <laughs> that's, that's where they go wrong. Uh, and then it's usually, it's either a stress fracture here or just this pin down here. And then it's just kind of a, it's a pain and you know, it's a new one you can get for probably 10 bucks if you wait. 20 bucks if you have to have it immediately but uh, i always have several of these things laying around again this is the old school man this one's probably when would i have bought this if i had to guess this one would be jeez like pre-2010 you know like probably 15 years old type of a ball ballpark there so uh, pretty good, like I said, just oil them and you'll be home free now. What I want to know from you is if you've used the Baxter or if you use something else for the space savings, how is it treating you? Do you have any issues with the 3-inch? Do you know of any attachments uh, that would fit this? You could run 2-inch or 1-inch discs in the 1-inch. It would be a really special you know, type of a deal, but uh, 2 well, I'll always, I'll never argue, you know, like getting the five inch disc over the four and a half. It's amazing how much longer it lasts on an angle grinder, right? Same thing here, but this is a situation where with this type of a tool, you might want tight confines working for you. But uh, yeah, 49 bucks. I felt like we could not go wrong. I do love the feel of it, at least here initially. 
Uh, we've got some nice accessories for it. Hopefully we'll see how these hold up. Obviously we've never used these. We'll have to figure that out. Same thing with these. I will kind of see how they go in three inch, but uh, had very good luck with those. The weird, stupid looking, like these fiber discs and then like the nylon brushes. Those are surprisingly good for like rust removal and just kind of knocking, not like heavy undercoat or anything, but uh, just like, you know, surface type of stuff. They're surprisingly good. So uh, if you never checked them out, I definitely encourage you to do so. But uh, with that said, I will quit rambling. That's all we've got here. If you want to see this thing in use, uh, you'll have to check out some other videos. I'm actually planning on seeing how this does just kind of use one of those and kind of rough up the surface of our bandsaw before we paint it. So we'll see how that goes, but uh, yeah, uh, LoneStarMopars.com is the website. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all three at LoneStarMopars. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Again, your thoughts, experience, first-hand feedback, always appreciated. Leave that down below in the comments section. If you haven't subscribed, I encourage you to do so. If you jump your charger across the creek and ring the bell, YouTube just might notify you what new videos out every Wednesday and Saturday at 9 a.m. Texas time. Well, that said, thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you back here for more action in the shadows.